G'day guys. A friend recently gave me their old iPad 2, so today I thought we would take a look and see if we can make it a little more usable in 2025. The iPad 2 we have here is the 32 gig Wi-Fi with SIM card variant featuring 512 mega RAM and Apple's dual core A5 SoC, which came out back in 2011. It's also running iOS version 9.3.5. I think we'll start off by seeing if it can still actually play YouTube videos. Okay, we've finally loaded one of our old videos now. It did take around two minutes to get this video playing. It looks like modern web is just a little bit too heavy for this old CPU. If we go to settings, you can see we are limited to 360p. So that is a bit of a shame. But if we go full screen, it is playing it okay. The sound does work, I've just turned it right down, just so it's not annoying. But yeah, it is, it is working. And see if we can scroll. Scroll was quite smooth. So YouTube playback does work, but it's pretty limited. In fact, web browsing, just in general, is pretty, uh, pretty unpleasant on this tablet. We'll close out of this, and I think we'll take a look at the App Store. The App Store loaded fairly quickly, which was nice, but unfortunately, since the device is so old, we aren't going to be able to install anything from the App Store. And unlike Android, we can't just manually install apps, download it online, at least not out of the box. It looks like we can either sideload up to three apps and manually refresh them each week, or jailbreak the device using a semi-untethered jailbreak, which means we'll have to refresh the jailbreak weekly, or every time we reset the iPad. I think I'm going to try the semi-untethered jailbreak. Keep in mind, this will be my first time jailbreaking an Apple device in many, many years. So it's not really designed to be a guide, but more of a follow along and watch me struggle. We'll try the online jailbreak first. So close out of this, open up Safari, and we want to go to before the video loads. So I can go back to the homepage and we want to go to jailbreaks.app slash legacy.html. And unfortunately, it does look like Apple's blocked this site on Safari, which is uh, pretty horrible. I'll try the main page. Still no good. We may have to add HTTPS to it. And even with the full HTTPS, www, it still doesn't want to open the site. Google works, so we do have internet. I'll try Googling the Jailbreaks app just to see if there's a, a different link we can use. So the top result is jailbreaks.app, but again, it is blocked. So it looks like Safari is just a little bit too old to make the secure connection. I will go back to the App Store and see if I can somehow get Google Chrome installed. It may still have an older version, which will let me install it without having to install it first on a modern device. So Google Chrome, click get, install, and no. So we can't jailbreak anything on the device. It looks like I'm gonna have to go get my trusty little Windows Chromebook and we'll see if we can sideload it using Sideloadly. Okay, we're back. I ended up installing iTunes and Sideloadly on my main Windows computer. I did end up having to create an Apple ID, which does take quite a lot of effort on a Windows computer. iTunes wouldn't let me create the ID, it kept uh, crashing at the end. So I ended up creating an Apple Music ID and then going to appleid.apple.com and converting it to a full Apple ID, which did require a phone number for verification, which was again, fairly annoying. Once all that was done, I had to sign into iTunes on my computer and then connect the iPad over USB, click trust on the iPad, close iTunes, and finally run sideloadly and log in with my Apple ID account that I just created, which eventually let me sideload the Phoenix jailbreaking app. So now all that's done, we will try open the app and see if we can jailbreak. Prepare for jailbreak, accept. Miss the ad, do the jailbreak, begin. We'll use provided offsets. I believe if it doesn't work, you can go to the Phoenix jailbreak site and use their custom offsets. We'll try the provided first. So it looks like it has reset the device. Hopefully it does boot back up, we haven't bricked it. And thankfully it did turn back on. Now, Cydia is installed. I'm not sure if the resetting of the iPad was part of the process, so we'll try open Cydia and it does work, so it is jailbroken. So if your device restarts while jailbreaking, don't panic, it looks like it's just part of it. Now I haven't used Cydia for a very, very long time, and it looks like a lot of the repositories are down. We'll do complete upgrade. That's fine, confirm. Cydia did automatically close itself, so we'll reopen it and hopefully they're all installed. So now it's updated. I think I will try and 
install what we need to be able to install IPA files on the tablet itself without the need for side loading. I believe we need three things, iFile, AppSync and IPA installer. So we'll start with iFile. Hopefully the repositories are there, at least one of them. We'll click install, see if it works. Confirm. That seemed to install okay. We'll go return to Cydia, we'll go search. We'll see if we can get AppSync. Doesn't look like it's in any of the repositories we have, unless it's two words. We'll search for sync, see if there's anything. No, no hits. We'll try IPA installer. So there is IPA installer, which is good. We'll install that. Hopefully that lets us install uh, IPAs as it mentions. In the description, it did say it's for iOS 6, 7, and 8, and we are running 9. So hopefully it is compatible. Return to Cydia. We'll go back to search. Now we didn't get app sync. I'm not too sure if that is actually needed. So before we start messing with different repositories, we will try and download an old IPA, see if we can get it sideloaded or installed. I'll just use Safari. I was going to try and download the IPAs on the device itself using Safari, but it's just so incredibly broken and slow. I think I'll download them on my computer and see if I can copy the IPA files over to the tablet. I think back in the day you could use iTunes and there would be a file explorer option in iTunes under the device so hopefully that is there. So we're back once again. Copying files over to the device was way harder than it needed to be. I first tried installing Filesa from Cydia and transferring files over to the Filesa app using iTunes which just didn't work. It kept saying the drive couldn't be found. Also iTunes itself freezes on Windows when trying to access pretty much anything inside the app but the fix was thankfully just opening it as administrator. So after failing with Filesa and iTunes I ended up installing OpenSSH server from Cydia and using FileZilla on my main Windows PC to send files over to the iPods media folder using SFTP. The default username is root and the default password which you should absolutely change is Alpine. Once I finished transferring all the files over, the iPad did lock up and I had to do a hard reset using the power and home buttons together for about 30 seconds. Thankfully it booted straight back up, no issues, but because it has been reset that means that it is no longer jailbroken, so if I try to open Cydia for example it just crashes. So I'll have to open Phoenix once more and click kickstart jailbreak. We'll try the provided offsets once more and it has reset once again, which it did last time, so not too worried with that. Now we finished booting up. Hopefully it is jailbroken. We'll start by trying iFile to see if we can find the files that I copied over. So I ended up copying all my files to private, there, root, and media. So I've got two test videos, two emulators, VLC, and Command & Conquer Red Alert 3 which I did actually pay for way back in the day along with the expansion, but I've lost my iTunes account. So we know where they are. We'll close off iFile and we'll try IPA installer, see if we can get any of the IPA files installed. Cancel. We want to go to there again. We want to go down to root. Permission denied. Can I get permission? I could not. So I think what we'll do is I'll close this off, we'll go back to iFile and I'll see if I can copy all of them, cut them actually, I want to select all, select all, I'll go cut and if I go to documents or home, media, media and I'll see if I can go to downloads and paste them in here, done. Now if we close off iFile, go to IPA installer, cancel that, go to downloads, and none of our files are in here. Media, media and downloads, there they all are. So we'll start with VLC player, see if this actually installs. I'm not sure if it will because we don't have AppSync, so it looks like we do need AppSync. We'll go back to Cydia and see if we can find a working repository. We're in Cydia, we'll go to Sources, go to Edit, go to Add. We want to add Cydia.akemi.ai, click Add Source. The request timed out, which is not good. 
So the repository that was hosting AppSync seems to be permanently offline now. The workaround was to manually download the AppSync dev file, which apparently we can just install in iFile. So I've downloaded it on my main computer, copied it over using FileZilla once more. We'll open up iFile. And there should be a dev file. There it is there, AppSync. Uh, installer. So the error says that it is missing dependencies and one of them is mobile substrate. So I'll click done, we'll close that, go back to Cydia, see if we can download that manually. So I ended up going back to Cydia and installing something called substrate safe mode, which also mentioned that it was installing AppSync Unified. So I think we should be able to install IPAs now. Go to cancel that, go to media, go to downloads. And once again, try VLC. It says successfully installed, so finally got something working. Click done. I'll try and install Command and Conquer next. It doesn't like it. I'm wondering if it's for the wrong version or it's not signed correctly. We'll try PSX for iPhone, which is a PlayStation emulator. That worked fine. We'll go SNES for iPhone. That one didn't work. So I'm not too sure what the requirements are for certain apps. Some of them work, some of them don't. That is a bit upsetting. I think we'll go back to Cydia and see if there's any emulators in here. We've got SNES 9X. Click return to Cydia. I might try Game Boy Advance emulator as well, if there's any. GBA.emu. This is a great emulator that I used to use on Android. But it looks like it doesn't support. If I click recheck, no good. So we can't use gba.emu. There's no Game Boy Advance simulator. What about this Game Boy? Game Boy 80X Plus might do Game Boy Advanced. Uh, looks like it's just Game Boy Color. I'll install that as well. Confirm. We do have to restart the springboard for this, which doesn't reset the device. It just refreshes the desktop environment, I guess you'd call it, or the springboard as they call it. While I was copying a few ROMs over to test out on the emulators we installed, I did end up downloading a bunch of different Red Alert IPA files, hoping that one of them does work. So we'll try the first one. It's from a shady Russian site. This was also the largest IPA for this game, so I'm not expecting it to be a real app. It probably is malicious. So the dodgy Russian one didn't work. We have already tried the one with TMs everywhere. We'll try the next one down. And this Red Alert IPA did in fact install, so that's pretty cool. There it is there. So I think we'll start off with the Red Alert. This was an awesome uh, port back in the day. There was never many maps for this, but I did remember purchasing the expansion pack, which added a few more, not many more, but a few more. The Melting Pot's a classic one anyway. Oh, and it crashed. I'll open it back up and see if we can uh, Get it to work. We'll go options this time. That all looks fine. That's fine. We'll go back to skirmish. We'll try Siberian Assault. We'll skip the video. Ah, can't skip it anyway. It hasn't crashed this time. So we got construction yard, we got a power plant. And it crashed again. I believe this wants a minimum of iOS 3 or 4. So maybe it's just the fact we're running on iOS 9 uh, that it doesn't work. So we'll leave that for now. We'll go to VLC player and we'll VLC doesn't work at all. That is unfortunate. I guess we'll skip that and we'll start with some PlayStation, which also doesn't work. What about SNES 9X? So SNES 9X does work, thankfully. Try load game. Country 2. It does have a really nice screen on it, even though it's not very high res. It does look really good. There's no slowdown or lag or anything like that, although SNES isn't that hard to run. We'll see if we can get the Game Boy Color emulator working. I might just close out of this first. that loads, which is good. 
Can't find any of our games. I guess go to settings. There's an option for Wiimote. Back in the day on my old iPod Touch or iPhone 3GS. Can't remember. I did have a Wiimote that I used to play all of my old games on. I actually forgot all about that. There is no active game and that seems to have locked it up. I'm not too sure what folder it's actually looking in, but it doesn't seem to be a way to change it. I'm guessing if I read the manual it'd be fine. Yeah, there it is there. Once it in ROMs Game Boy. So we'll try copy our test ROM to the Game Boy folder. And there's our game. Wow, that looks like it's a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. Okay, so it is a very, very small screen. And it won't let us rotate the screen at all, so we are stuck playing this tiny little window. I guess this wouldn't be too bad on an iPhone, but on an iPad it is a bit ridiculous. But yeah, it runs fine. It is a bit hard to control. I guess you couldn't hold it like a real Game Boy. Yeah, it seems to work fine. So is an iPad 2 with iOS 9.35 still usable in 2025? I would say generally not really. You can't install any apps on it through the App Store. As I mentioned earlier, apparently if you have a modern device, you can sign in using the same account as that, download the app on the modern device, and then when you go onto this iPad, uh, go to the App Store, if you select the same app, if it has an older version available from Apple servers, it will try and install it. That is just a hassle though, and I don't have a modern iOS device. Getting it jailbroken wasn't too hard, but getting files actually copied over to the device was a uh, struggle. A lot of apps just didn't install, and the ones that did install just don't open. So, VLC, PSX, that is crash. There were no dependency issues when I installed them, and again, these weren't from Cydia, they were IPAs. It did play SNES and Game Boy perfectly. It almost ran Red Alert. It uh, did crash every time. YouTube playback was pretty shocking, as was web browsing in general. I did look online. There are a few methods to make YouTube slightly more bearable. That involves downgrading to iOS 6, ideally, and using a number of tweaks from Cydia to try and get the original stock YouTube app or an old version of it which again, you have to manually install, working. Also, people recommended iOS 6 or 8 for this iPad, just because 9 does run extremely slow, and I have noticed it is slow. But even with an older version of iOS, we might be able to get a few old iOS games working, but web browsing is still just a struggle with only 512 mega RAM and this extremely aged dual-core CPU. I think that'll do it for today. I hope someone out there found this interesting. If you do want to see me downgrade this to an older iOS version and try some games, let me know. Or if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.